Is Cameron Scanaboo ready to become a big time bell cow in 2024? You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. A shout out to my everydayers who are here every day, and thanks for making us your first listen of the day. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast. Stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrads36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. The playoffs are all done and the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is looking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And we are once again getting into our stat prediction series, which we started on Friday. If you missed that, we kicked it off with Sam Levitt. I encourage you guys to go check it out. It was a really fun show. We've done this uh We've done this every year where basically we look at individual players. We go over their their best case scenario, worst case scenario, and then my prediction for their stats. So that's a, that's a spiel. Essentially, there's so there's a couple stipulations. The first is that we're under the assumption that they are going to be either a starter or in a very significant role for the team. We're also looking at this as an individual. So if I if I were to say there's three wide receivers who have a thousand yard uh capability, I'm not saying ASU is going to have three thousand yard receivers. Instead, that's like a individual case to case thing where oh X receiver could do a thousand yards, so could Y receiver. That's that's the way we do it. And again, best case, worst case, and my prediction. With that being said, we'll hop right in. The question I posed at the top of the show, is Cameron Scanaboo ready to become a bell cow in 2024? Last year, I would would say that he was right there. 164 carries as well as 24 receptions. So that's, that's a good workload. 188 carries is a good workload. I don't know if I would have called him a bell cow, he definitely had the lion's share of carries, but to Carlos Brooks, who had 48 carries, also only played four games last year. I would imagine that he, now that he's healthy, is going to sap some carries. You have Relique Brown as well. You've got uh, Alton McCaskill is there. You've got Kyson Brown, Jason Brown. There's a lot of guys to feed on this offense. I don't know if there's necessarily a single bell cow, but... I do think that Scandaboo has that capability. And we'll talk about that a little more towards the end of the show. Breaking down the statistics now, we'll start with the rushing stats. And first is the yards, which I know is what everybody is most excited about. The best case scenario I could see from Scandaboo is 1,400. And before you before you go, that's absolutely insane. First of all, it would be. That would be a career best for him. Uh, in 2022 with Sacramento State, he ran for 1,372 yards, seven yards per carry, and seven touchdowns. This is best case scenario for Scadaboo based off of the talent that he possesses, uh, the, the, the cut and go, the power running style. He's got everything to offer on the table, which is why there's there's such a high ceiling here for Scadaboo. Last year, he only ran for 783 yards. I have to imagine that number would have been significantly better if ASU was in a position to run the football more, but ASU would get down on the scoreboard and they would be forced to throw the ball. They threw the ball 440 times last year. That's, that's not going to happen again. Not unless 
ASU turns into a high-flying passing attack, they are going to be less than 440 pass attempts, and I think Scadaboo is going to get over the 200 carry mark. From there, it turns into an efficiency thing. Last year, 4.8 yards per carry for Scadaboo. Very, very solid, very, very healthy. His previous two seasons at Sacramento State were 9.1 and 7.0. Again, it's... It's, it's a best-case scenario for him, and I can also identify that Sacramento State's competition is not Arizona State's competition, but this is a best-case scenario for him. This is where I believe Scanaboo can turn into a beast. With that being said, his worst-case scenario, I think it's a little less than what he did last year. I got 700 yards flat. He's, he's proven, but... Another thing that you have to consider, and again, this is this goes into the bell cow conversation, is there's a lot of mouths to feed. And Scadaboo could be super duper efficient once again, and his yards per carry could go up from 4.8, 4. but that doesn't mean that he's going to hit the 200 carry mark. I think he will, but you could have Relique Brown and DeCarlos Brooks each have 70 touches. That's going to seep into Cameron Scannaboo and his opportunities. The good news is he's just a really efficient guy. I think no matter how many touches he get, you are going to you're going to see good production out of him, which is why my prediction is a flat 1,000 yards. This to me is beyond attainable. I also believe that Scannaboo is going to have that number circled for himself because he is potentially in his last year of college. I think he's got another year, but I don't know eligibility stuff. But he is definitely going to be shooting for a 1,000 yards, because if it is his last year, then this is your opportunity to advertise yourself to your future employers at the NFL level. I got a 1,000 yards for him. Touchdowns. Last year, Scadaboo was able to get uh, nine touchdowns on the ground. He had another touchdown through the air. Big plays all over the place. He had a 66-yard touchdown run, and he had a 66-yard touchdown reception. There's there is ability for him to be a, a, a high-scoring player once again for ASU. Ten touchdowns led the team. It wasn't close. Best case scenario, and this this again, this goes into the 1,400 yards as a best case scenario, 15 touchdowns. It's it's a ton of touchdowns. The other logic that I kind of have with this is he reminds me of, of a of another breakout running back that the that oh my goodness, the Sun Devils had a handful of years ago, and Eno Benjamin. And Benjamin was able to absolutely go insane in his sophomore year with ASU when he ran for 1,600 yards and 16 touchdowns. This, to me, feels like a ceiling for what Scadaboo can do, but a little less because I think that Eno Benjamin was a more talented player. With Scadaboo, I, I believe he can have that kind of workload that Eno got. And with that workload is going to come production because he is a very efficient player. He's able to get 200 touches a game. Uh, oh my goodness. 200 touches a game. He's able to get 1,400 rushing yards. He's going to be in the end zone a lot. He had nine touchdowns last year with under 800 rushing yards. 15 is the max that I could see. The worst case scenario is five. And it... Even five feels too low. Like seven feels like the most realistic seven to eight touchdowns, kind of in that ballpark of where he was last year. If he only gets five, either either he's just not as efficient as he was last year, or ASU is just not rushing for a lot of touchdowns. Even with Brooks, even with Relique Brown. Scadaboo is going to get into the end zone. That's that's just a fact. He is going to get into the end zone. 
it doesn't matter if he has 164 carries again or if he has 250. This is a touchdown running back. Five touchdowns would be mind-blowing to me. My prediction, I'm on the higher side and I'm going 12. And again, this is just rushing touchdowns. I'm saying 12 rushing touchdowns. I'm saying 1,000 rushing yards. This feels super attainable for him. He had, he gets nine touchdowns last year on under 800 yards. You give him another 200 plus yards. You give him at least 20 to 30 more carries. He's going to get in the end zone more. I got a thousand yards. I got 12 touchdowns. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next part of the podcast where we take a look at his receiving stats, receptions, yards, and touchdowns. We'll hop into that in just a moment. This is the Locked On Sum of His Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I love sports and I love them so much I never want them to stop, but the playoffs are done and we're getting fewer games and sports just aren't sporting like I want them to. FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer... FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Back into our conversation now with Cameron Scanaboo. Moving over to the receiving stats for him. This was this was a really interesting question for me. Is what does it look like going into this year? ASU had 440 attempts last year as a team. I've already said that's going down. That's there, there's just not going to be a ton of a ton of passing attempts, in my opinion. I think this is going to be a run-heavy team. And they did run the ball 374 times last year, although 30 of those were sacked. So 344 carries as a team. That's the bare minimum for ASU again this year. But I think it's going to be north of that. How this affects Scadaboo and the passing game will be interesting, especially because... I anticipate Relique Brown is going to be heavily involved as a pass catcher, if not the main pass catcher out of the backfield for ASU. Best case scenario for Scadaboo, I'm saying 35. I think it's I that would be a, like a first team all conference season for him if he got 35. Last year he had 24. That was being one of the main threats on the team when it came to catching passes out of the backfield. That's about where I would predict him. 35 would be a huge season for him. Lowest I could see. Probably between 15 and 20. He had 24 last year. I I have a hard time thinking it's going to be significantly less. Than that, I would go 20, 15. If he had 15, then I would expect Relief Brown to have close to 40 catches. My prediction, I'm going 25. I think he's right there with what he did last year. He's still going to get the football. He's going to get the opportunities. The two guys ahead of him, Elijah Badger and Jalen Conyers, are no longer on the team. ASU is going to be looking for a reliable option in the passing game. Sam Levitt is going to be looking for someone to get the ball out to as he continues to develop as a quarterback. Cameron Scadaboo is that guy. Scadaboo is still going to get opportunities in the passing game. I got 25 receptions for him. Best case scenario for receiving yards, I'm going to go 400. 35 catches, 400 yards. It would be over 10 yards a catch. But fun fact, he has over 10 yards a catch in his entire career. Every single year, 2021 with Sacramento State, 10.3 yards per reception. 2022 with Sacramento State, 12 yards per reception. 
Last year, 11.9 yards per reception. And I do know that he had a 66-yard touchdown. But even if you take that away, he's a lot closer to 10 yards per reception than you think. I could see him do it for a fourth straight year. It's just about the efficiency with him. And Scadaboo is as efficient a running back as ASU has had in the last several years. 35 catches, 400 yards, best case scenario for me. Worst case scenario with only 100, or not 150, goodness, uh, with 20 catches as my low, I think 150 yards is probably worst case. That would put him seven and a half yards per reception, which in fairness is more than a good uh, yards per reception for a running back. You would take seven and a half on every single day of the week and twice on Saturdays. It's just not what we're used to from him. My prediction, I'm going to say 250. So he's right on the 10 yards per reception mark. It would be almost two yards less than last year. But this is this is a team that, again, to feed a fed horse, I anticipate is going to be much more run heavy than they are pass heavy. There's not going to be more volume than there was last year for him. And again, you take away that 66 yard touchdown. He's under 10 yards per catch. That's about where I see him. Best case, worst case for receiving touchdowns. Best case, five. That would be, to me, really just absolutely making the most of those opportunities. And with 35 catches and 400 yards, you probably anticipate he's getting in the end zone quite a bit. Worst case, I'll go zero. He... Would have had zero last year without the rumbling, bumbling, stumbling touchdown run that he had. It's it's a very realistic possibility that he does not get into the end zone through the air. With all of the changes in the passing game with a new quarterback, with a new number one receiver, with a new number one tight end, there is a possibility that Scadaboo just doesn't find the end zone as a pass catcher. My prediction, I'm going two. One more than he had last year. It's not a crazy amount, but with 25 catches and 250 yards, I would imagine that he is going to find the end zone a couple of times. Nothing too crazy, but the good news is you pair that with the 12 rushing touchdowns that I predicted, and that's 14 total. So looking at these stats overall, third or uh, best case scenario, 35 catches, 400 yards, five touchdowns. Outstanding. Worst case, 20 catches, 150 yards, zero touchdowns. You still take that. That's still a good scenario for you. Seven and a half yards for reception. This is also probably someone who is not getting the volume through the passing game. My prediction, 25 catches, 250 yards, two touchdowns i'd say that's pretty good i'd say that that is more than a good season for him once again you would be at that 10 yards per reception you would be able to get into the end zone a couple of times and you have the efficiency and the big play ability out of the backfield this is this is a really good situation that you would be placed in if you were to have Scadaboo put that kind of season together through the air, but there's going to be competition. Later this week, we're going to be talking about Relief Brown. He's going to have a major impact in the passing game, and you guys will see when we get to those stat predictions. But we're going to hop into the final segment of this podcast where we take a look at some miscellaneous stats and answer the question, is he ready to be a bell cow? We'll get into it in just a moment. This is the Locked On Sun Levels podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. One last time, wherever you get your podcast hit, like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. A shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. A couple of miscellaneous stats for you. Uh, carries, we already went over this, kind of, sort of. I think a best case scenario for carries... I'll go I'll go 220. And this is the bell cow situation. This is also a situation where ASU 
is not really given running opportunities to some of the other guys. Maybe to Carlos Brooks is only 48 or uh, 48 carries again this year. Maybe Relic Brown is under 70 carries. This would be a Cameron Scanaboo is the offense. Everything goes through him. Worst case scenario, I'll go 150. He's still going to get a lion's share of touches. But 150 to me would mean that ASU is really involving everybody else. This is a situation where Relic Brown challenges for 100 carries. This is where the Carlos Brooks, if he's running back two, challenges for 100 carries. I think that Brooks would have gotten there last year if he had been healthy. ASU could really lean in, could really lean into Cameron Scadaboo. Or they could just really divvy up the carries pretty evenly. My prediction, I am just under 200. I'm going to go 180, maybe 190. I think 200 is really a good sweet spot. I just don't know what the, what the rest of the situation is going to look like with Brown, with with Brooks, with Kyson Brown, with Jason Brown, with Alton McCaskill. There's a lot of mouths to feed here. It's it's a very interesting situation that ASU has found themselves in. Going to the yards per carry, I think a best case scenario is right around 6.0 yards per carry. It would It would be one of his most efficient seasons. It would be outstanding. Worst case, a flat four. To me, that's almost unrealistic, but it could happen. It's it's within the realm of possibilities that ASU's run game is just not as efficient as it was last year. Last year, they averaged 3.6 yards per carry. Nothing crazy, but Scadaboo had 4.8. Carlos Brooks had 5.4. Kyson Brown had 4.2. There was more than efficiency from the from the actual running backs last year. So much of that was weighed down by negative negative yardage from the running backs. ASU was going to be much more efficient in the run game, but Scadaboo could have a step back this year, especially if the carries are really divvied up. That could also play into more efficiency. 4.0 bottom line is the worst case scenario for me. My prediction on yards per carry, I'm going to go 5 points. 5.5 is really enticing. I'd be I'd probably be halfway there, 5.2, 5.3 yards per yards per carry. That's that's the uh, I don't want to say it's the most realistic, but it's super attainable for him. Super attainable. 5.2 is going to be my mark there. Uh, yards per reception, just real quick, 12 yards per reception. That's the best case. That'd be right around his average for his career, a little less than that. Uh, lowest, probably six yards per reception, maybe five yards per reception. That just would be efficient. Uh, My prediction, probably about 8.5, maybe around 9. I just, it's so difficult for running backs to predict them over 10 yards per reception. It's, It's not an easy task for these guys to do it. And you take away that 66 yard touchdown, and that's where Scadaboo was last year, right about 8.5. I'll say he does it again. Passing stats. I don't know if he's going to uh, have another 15 attempts this year like he did last year. He's definitely going to get attempts because he's Mr. Do-It-All. He's the people's running back, as I like to call him. He is going to get more than enough touches and opportunities to make all sorts of plays. I would venture 15 is probably the most attempts I could see. Least amount would be zero is they just don't have Scadaboo featured as a pass thrower this year. 
prediction, I'd go under 10, but more than five. Let's say, uh, you know what? Let's say 10. We'll, we'll go with 10. That would be, that would be, I, I wouldn't call that gimmicky, but it's, it's fun to have him throw the ball at least 10 times. It's, it's something that they were able to do last year. Might be able to do it again this year. Uh, yards, I have no idea. I have no idea. He had 130 yards last year on six completions. It's, I don't know. I have, I have no idea for yards. Maybe around 100. I, I, I feel like it's absolutely under 100 this year. There were some big completions last year. Overall, is Cameron Scadaboo ready to be a bell cow? I think he's ready. I don't know if he's going to be it. There's there's so many opportunities here for ASU running backs to be able to make splashes, make big plays. Scadaboo could be in the same role as he was last year and just have the efficiency and uh, taking a really good increase. He could he could carry the ball again 164 times, and I wouldn't be shocked if he added a whole yard per carry. I wouldn't be shocked if he went from 4.8 to 5.8. Keeping him fresh is going to be one of the one of the biggest tasks for ASU football this year. He's so important. He's so pivotal to the offense. You lose him, that'd be really bad. You have enough guys to keep him fresh. If you want to make him a bell cow, he can do it. He's he's absolutely talented enough to be able to be that bell cow. His career high in carries is 195, though. He's never hit 200. Is is he is he ready for 200? He's more than capable. He's more than efficient enough to do it. Is he ready for 200? I don't necessarily know. I don't know if the offense is going to get him to that point. One more question I have. How much will Scadaboo be asked to do? Is he going to be 250 touches? My total predictions where I said 220 in, in a best case scenario, 220 carries and 35 receptions. That puts him at 255 touches. Is he is he going to be asked to do that? My worst case scenario, I said, what did I say? 20 receptions. And 150 uh, attempts, so 170, which is right about right around his average for his career. That's more realistic. My overall prediction: I said 25 catches, 180 yards, 205 touches. That would, I think, that would be a career high. Now I'm now I can't remember 195. Uh, no, his career high is 126. So a little less than than his career high. Is he is he ready for that? Is he ready for that? And is is Kenny Dillingham and Marcus Arroyo going to ask him to do that when you've got everything going in the backfield? But I mean, you you've also got guys to throw the ball to. Jordan Tyson will be a really fun one to talk about when we get there. There's a cast of receivers. Tight end is going to be really interesting as well. Overall, what is, what's going to be asked of Scadaboo? That is one of the most interesting questions for ASU as a whole coming up this year. What's that going to look like? And we'll be paying attention to that in training camp and in the first month of the season to see is Scadaboo getting 25 touches a game or is he getting 16 to 18 touches a game? Whatever that looks like, no matter how many touches it is, the one thing I know is you're going to get efficiency.
because there's one thing that Skadaboo has done his entire career. It's make the most out of every single touch he gets. But that's my predictions for Skadaboo. Am I too low? Am I too high? What are your predictions? Is this a thousand yard runner? How many touchdowns are you getting? Let me know in the comments. You can hit me up on Twitter, RichieBrads36, the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. But wherever you're getting your shows, hit like, hit subscribe, turn on notifications. I appreciate you guys for tuning in every day. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. We will be back again this week to talk about Relique Brown is up next for me. What's the best case? What's the worst case? What's my prediction on his stats? We'll talk about it soon. This is the Locked on Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I will see you guys next time. You keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun